right through this stuff. So the gist of this is about the kingdom of God and each of us. Okay. Read something I wrote a while ago. Um, there are two kingdoms. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of this world, which the devil messes up. The history and the news of this world that we hear daily seems to be full of suffering and death, oppression and war, poverty and disasters. It's a sad world, world where so many unique human lives have been short and harsh and seemingly discarded on the rubbish heap of time. Or, of course, just ordinary. which is about the kingdom of God. And it includes wonderful accounts of the harvesting of souls by the gospel, such as in past revivals in North Africa, Wales, India, USA, and so on, or in recent decades in Argentina, China, and of course Iran and the Middle East. Millions passing from darkness to light while the world continues largely oblivious or disinterested. Mind you, it was interesting to read um, an article by Matthew Paris, you may have heard of him, who's an atheist, saying that what Africa because he traveled through Africa and he'd met Christians and he noted that they had dignity and integrity and joy and things like that. Well, I'm glad he noticed. The other history also tells of countless individual encounters with God in the darkest places by people suffering in concentration camps or in battlefields or grace catching people at death's door or miraculous deliverance through disaster or attack. It reveals how God meets the insane, the unconscious, children, enemies, the unreached, the hardened, one in a million, one at a time, the peasant and the aristocrat, Muslim, the atheist, and for all I know, the unborn, you know, like John Baptist. Huh? It also tells of the ways that suffering has brought a response of love from God's people and others. Part of our witness today is how we help those in need. That's part of the kingdom of God at work. So this other history, it's not a story of power and control, except the power of love. It's not a story of war and conquest, except the defeat of sin. It's not a story of wealth and progress, except the destitute fallen like us. It's not about technology or cities, except the city of God, God's wide ways, wise ways, and gathering his people. So when the news of this world's last convulsion has ended, the other true story will remain and continue. I'll just mention um, a couple of brief stories from that other history. Um, some of you will know of Duncan Campbell, who was instrumental in the Hebrides revival in the 50s. Um, and his biography is a great story. Because before all that, he was a soldier on the Western Front in the First World War. And he was injured. And he lay there groaning on the battlefield. And could have died there, but a, a, a soldier on a horse came past, heard him groan, heaved him up and threw him over his horse, sort of hanging over his horse. Now Duncan at that time was really thirsty for more of God. And as he hung on that horse, galloping across the battlefield or walking, he was filled with the Holy Spirit. And he was taken to a field hospital and he lay there, surrounded by other wounded soldiers. And one of the nurses there was singing in Gaelic, Gaelic, as they say, and singing a a Christian hymn and he joined in and he said and it says that at that moment five Canadian soldiers who were there didn't even speak Gaelic found the Lord. I think that's a beautiful story. Here's a rather different one. Many of you know Johnny Sound. Um, I went to walk with him the other day and he told me how a couple of years ago um, he developed 
uh, kidney stone, which was agony. And it was just too big to be passed in his wee. And he, he'd already booked to go away for a bit with his friend Daryl, who remember there as well. So he, um, he was on really heavy painkillers. He walked out of the hospital and he got his plane and was in agony all the way. And he got to the hotel the other end and he spent half the night shouting at God, just angry and saying, you never answered my prayers. Oh, you know, what am I going to do? <laughs> and in the middle of it, he, he heard the still small voice of God in his spirit saying, be quiet, Johnny. So he did. He shut up. And the next thing he heard, he was still in pain. The next thing he heard was, lie down. So he did. And the pain went like that and never came back. I thought that was a lovely story. <laughs> the kingdom works in secret so much of the time. Uh, and the third one, actually, I have two. Uh, many of you all remember Jill Wagstaff. She was part of Promise for years. Um, so in touch with her. Uh, and she used to work in an old people's home in probably Frederick where she lived. And we were doing all sorts of campaigning and baptizing people and things like that. And she was just working in a self people's home at night, I think it was. And she told me how she quite often led old people to the Lord before they died. And I thought, that's the kingdom work, just as valid as any gallons of evangelism, you know. But the kingdom often works like that. It's beautiful. And because we love the testimony of God's work in the rains and curtains and so on, which just goes on and on. And uh, by the way, what's your story? Yeah, you know, what was your story of God capturing your heart for his kingdom? Is it, you know, in the news, um, widely known? Probably his amazing encounter with you personally. Because he knows you what nobody else. Mine was. I was on the bus to somebody know. So the real news is that the kingdom of God is coming in as the rule of Christ, quietly capturing heart after heart by the gospel and training each new child of God in the ways of love and goodness in his church. And the fullness of course will be revealed when Christ returns. This is just going on all the time, behind the noisy history of this world. And most times and places, it's, um, it's harder to actually see this going on. I and mean, many of us have personally known times when the advance of the kingdom was visibly real and exciting, you know, lots of people getting baptised and joining in the people of God. But most of the time, we all just seem to be living fairly ordinary lives. I just, I, I just say, um, let's keep our eyes open because I reckon spiritual saints are, often find themselves involved in this hidden story in quiet ways. We can keep our spiritual eyes open and our spiritual gifts and I, um, poised if you like, use, and I think God will employ them. But I also believe that along with this pandemic and all this turning things inside out, I believe days are coming when, again, we will see many people um, who've been prepared uh, for the kingdom. And we need to be ready to help them in whatever, whatever way God has equipped us. Often just friendship is the main thing. Um, uh, you know, not many people are actually evangelists, are they? But Peter said in 1 Peter 3, um, ESV, um, that means in the standard version of that. In your hearts, honour Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defence to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you, yet do it with gentleness and respect. Which is beautiful, isn't it? I don't think the New Testament says you ought to get out on the streets and talk to everybody. Um, it just says you be my witnesses. Um, and that's what being a witness is. Someone says, oh, why are you different? You know. <laughs> Or you want to use Bible rushes and you're ready to answer. Or maybe someone just says, Oh, I'm in such a strange, you know, there's something to help me. And Paul said in Corinthians 14, 1 Corinthians 14, when you come together, each one has a hymn, a lesson, a revelation, a tongue, or interpretation. 
you know, a bit on that. Let all things be done for building up. Now, I think this goes beyond church meetings. It's a daily encounters when we can use our spiritual gifts with love. You know, like words of knowledge or teaching, explaining things, or practical help, or healing. Oh, no, okay. Would you mind if I say a word virtually? And most people say, yes, please. So we are all part of this other kingdom, aren't we? Um, it's an underground story and have a part to play. That's what I said the message was and that's what it is. And um, I think it's a, it is just a thing of faith, isn't it? Because often you can't see very much happening and we need to be encouraged by these sort of things I've told you. So that each day, at least we might say, well, Lord, I'm available if you need me. <laughs> um, and he's made himself need us, which is beautiful. Um, okay, so for the breakout session, I guess I'll pray in a minute, but um, I'll repeat this too. A couple of questions. What have you seen of the kingdom advancing by the work of the Holy Spirit in your life recently, that's personally, or in the lives of others? And secondly, what part can you play? Okay, I'll repeat that in a minute. Just, that's just fine. Father, may your kingdom come and keep coming and come fully one day. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you qualified to be proclaimed the King, the Lord, the Messiah of the kingdom, and to gather a multitude to be with you and in you. Thank you. Thank you that we count ourselves as belonging to that kingdom by your grace alone. Not only that, thank you that you have equipped us in many ways which suit us each to play a part in the advance of your kingdom. Amen. Um, and you can sort of add, the Lord, give me opportunities. Anyway, um, so I'll repeat the questions again and then we can do the breakout. So what have you seen in the kingdom of answer? which is the work of the Holy Spirit in yourself recently or in others? Somebody you know, things you've noticed. And secondly, what part can you play? Um, how is God prepared to put to you to help anybody that uh, you come across where the Spirit is? That's it.